Good morning, everybody. This is Dee, and we're going to be uh, starting our technical assistance session this morning. And if you have not had the opportunity yet to check in, there is a poll for you to check in by area. So please make sure that you've done that. Also, if there are any particular topics that you would like to have discussed today, please uh, check those boxes. And then we also have uh, a poll question for you to answer. So if you would like to take a moment and answer that. All right, and Mike has just joined us, and we're waiting for him to call in. And then we'll do a sound check with him. All right, so good morning, Mike. Good morning. Well, I was fighting some technical difficulties there, but I made it. OK. OK, so we've gotten everybody to check in, I think. And uh, we have one person that has a question about work-based learning, so we'll get to that in just a moment. Would you like to explain the poll that you had me put up there about the fully meeting their goals? Uh, sure. If you look in the center right of your screen, uh, there's a poll that says how many of your ADAM clients have fully met the goals in their individual plan by the dates entered into the plan. So it, we have had one person respond. So what we'd like you to do is tell us how many of your folks fall into these categories. And I don't expect there to be anybody to be 100%. This is not a trick question. We're just wanting to see where you think your folks are, are uh, at in their progress. All right. So, Kathy, is that your uh, is that your question about the work-based learning for the job posting? Okay. So Kathy's question is, if they are working in an industry that is not listed in work-based learning, is there another place we should add their job on the Adam site? And that would be probably like a temporary employment because it's not in their industry. Is that what you're asking about, Kathy? And is that for a work experience? OK, we have a, several people from the regions on, and only two poll responses. So we need folks to let us know where you think your folks are at. Well, ah. OK. Well, if it's 0, then just cl click the lowest one. So on Adam, Adam is an actual kind of thing. Um, so on Adam, what they would probably want to do is just put a note in their um, that they've accepted employment. And also in their um, IWDS, you probably need to put a note that they've accepted some sort of a employment. I think that would be, in Adam, it would be a note to your team members rather than, um, uh, th rather than an actual. Because remember, Adam is plan, and IWDS is actual. So um, we want Right, but to we need to clarify, is this for a work experience? Experience or an OJT? When, when Kathy says work-based learning, what exactly is she talking about? All right. I'm 
employment for job. Okay. So you mean so you don't mean work based learning, you mean posting into the job. Okay. So D is right. Um, if they enter employment, you should enter that employment in IWDS. And then that will tell that asks you for, you know, who they're working with, what their wage is, all that good stuff. So we want to capture that they're working in IWDS. Um, depending on what the job is, I mean, that's what your case notes are for. So you can enter uh, details about it in the case notes. You also would need to update their plan to reflect the reality of what's going on. Okay, so we have five responses now. Can we get up to more than five? <laughs> I see. Yep. La, 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 la. I see quite a few local people on, which I'm happy about. And we only have uh, ten people that have checked in by area, and there's at least sixteen of you on the call. So you need to check in by area, please. Okay. So Kathy, you would do that. You can go in and change the plan at any time. So if they have entered employment on a date different than was was planned, or um, the plan needs to change based on that, just go in and edit their plan. But you would enter the information about the employer um, and then taking full time employment in IWDS. I mean, you take it, you put it both places, but officially it needs to be registered in IWDS. So you'd mark them, okay, I, I see your uh, note that they couldn't get a job in their industry, so they took other employment. So you would enter them as entered employment that was non-training related. Okay. Are you ready to show screen share yet, Mike? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, uh, of the folks that responded to the poll, thank you. Um, that is probably just about what I expected the results to look like. So we want to share a screen on the uh, dashboard and just ask if you all are looking at this and if you're not looking at it, what is going on that we need to talk about to um, see what we can do about that? So can, yeah, can you make that bigger? Okay, so this is the first intake dashboard that shows you where the clients are at as they're coming into the system. So can we go over to the training plan dashboard? Yes, I was trying to make the screen bigger just a moment. Yeah, yeah, right, go ahead. So training plan. Now this is actually live data for the state. All right. Okay. Okay, so. That's interesting. Okay, so we're showing that, okay, in the overall total we have 369 people that are, that we're tracking, and there are individual services for those folks based on their plan that um, overall 584 of those have not been met. So that just means that there was a, a date plan for something to happen, and that activity was not entered into their plan as being completed by the initial date that was in there. So the system checks for that and just says, hey, there's a service date that wasn't met. And if you want to know a little more detail about that, it's broken out by the three main steps that everyone has to go through. You know, have they done the career exploration? So there were 139 that haven't either started or completed that by the date that was planned for them. Then creating a personalized plan is step two. Then the required MSSC safety training 
is step three. So you can, the idea is showing you here um, where I'm looking. So what the intent was, was to create the on-track, off-track button so a case manager could easily mark if something has, is going on that requires the team's attention and the client's attention to get back on track. So this is, the, fir the first pink column is, is the system. That is saying that something is amiss, you need to look at it. The service off track button is a manual setting that um, needs to be set by a case manager to call attention to the client and everybody else that's working with that individual that, hey, so we've missed something, whatever it is, and we need to give some special attention to that. So I see a huge disconnect between 584 service dates not being met and only nine people being marked as off track. So I would like to generate a little discussion about what is the disconnect, why, just, well, I'm not going to speculate. I'll just, I'll just ask you all. Why is it that the service off track function is not being utilized? And you can just put into the chat pod um, what your thoughts are on that. And while people are thinking and typing, I'll preface this with, I'm trying to approach this from a customer service standpoint, um, mostly at least. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, is there something that we can do to help you utilize this functionality. I put a poll up for you, Mike. Yeah, thank you. And real quickly, um, is it that you don't understand how to use it? or that you don't see value in it. I guess those are the, the two big possibilities in my mind. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take off the broadcast results so that it, other people won't see your answer. So if if you're being shy about giving your answer Go ahead and type it into the pod. Um, Mike and I will be the only ones that will see your answers. And, and again, um, I, as from my position, I, I'm really curious to know. So I have big shoulders. You're not going to hurt my feelings. So if you don't see value in it, I need to know that. But if it's a matter of not understanding how to use it or not sure how it fits in, then that's a matter of helping make you all aware of that. So depending on what you all are telling me, that will help determine which course of action we take as we go forward. Okay, Kyle, we're getting some responses now. Thank you. And service off track, do you want to explain it real simply again? It means that the plan that you put out for the person, the trainee, the plan that you put out for the person has not been met. And as, and as Mike said a little bit earlier, I'm going to move this over just a little bit more. Hopefully everybody can see this. The service dates not met are generated by the system. Service off track are for you and your team members to update. So for example, if somebody needed to go through some ESL stuff, and I'm not sure if anybody's even on an ESL program, but maybe they didn't complete their ESL program on time, but they're only two weeks late, go in and change the date, and then they'll be on track again. So you can make people on track by just changing their date. Otherwise, you have to find out why somebody's totally off track. Right, right. And, and to clarify that even further, 
you're, if you go in and change the date on the plan, that will reduce the number of people that show up in the service dates not met column. But the on track, off track is, is a selection button that you either turn on or turn off based on the situation. Um, we right. have somebody in the poll asked if we could see a breakdown, if any of their customers are in the count. You can go to your dashboard from your organization if you have access to a dashboard, if you can log in to your Atom tools and go to your training plan, and you can see a list. So if I ch click on this number, I will see the people. Let me go to um, Mike. Let me go to the dashboard for the people, so that we've got fake people in this one. So under the training plan, and again, I'm at state level on this particular one. And this is the edit version, the, the testing version. And let me try to make this bigger. So if I look at this and I look at the number, because I don't want to show anybody's real data. Uh, if I look at the service off track, I've got one person here, but if I look at service dates not met, I look at 14, and it shows me what area. And all of these are fake people, so don't worry about us giving out anybody's data. And so then you can go in and say, career exploration service dates were not met by these people. So it will, go, it will tell you exactly who they are. And then you can go in and look at their plan, so if I go to Bobby Brown and look at his plan, all I have to do to make his service date be in the not met column is to go in and change a date if I need to or else mark him off track. So you've got the two options, to mark him off track or to actually change the date. Okay, so if, if we go into technical training or optional training or expanded bridge, that's where we can change dates on things, on items. So if we have a planned start, we can change it in here. We change the dates here, so if, if the end, planned end date is now going to be um, 10, Ten. it's not letting me change it, Mike, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. But, but this is where you, so the planned test date is 10, say it's October now, um, 2nd of 2014, I would change it here. And then, and then it will take that person so that they're not off track any longer. Right. So it's that simple. Right. And again, the idea of this is because Adam clients generally were expected to require more hand-holding and more intensive case management than regular WIA clients. This tracking system was set up so that you can easily see, both at a detail level, you know where your people are at, but also you can see it from uh, the big picture level, from the 30,000 foot level, how many people you might have at each particular phase of the process, so you all can plan your services accordingly, so you know when, um, you know your training cohorts can start when your work-based learning can start, when people are planned to come out of training. It's all designed to help you better manage the flow of people as they go through that pipeline from intake to employment. So you, and again, you know, the idea of this dashboard is you can see the big picture. So you can say, hey, I've got 20 people at this stage. 
I got out of that 20 people, I got four people that have missed a service date, so I need to go check them. Okay. Um, so I've asked a question in the chat pod. Um, I'd like to know how many people regularly even look at their dashboard. Because I look at this every day. And it tells me a lot. And as Dee was showing you, uh, any number that you see underlined in the dashboard, you click on that number and the individuals that make up that number appear on a list very conveniently for you. So it's a great way to keep track of where your folks are at and what is going on with them. But like anything, like any tracking system, it is only as useful as the information you put into it. So I find it very useful uh, because I have to give reports to people above me and to DOL in Chicago and Washington. So I can find all sorts of great stuff about where clients are at and what their status is by going in here. So if we need to devote a session just on this, we're happy to do that, and we can make our next session you know, uh, about how to fully utilize this so you can you know, ease your workload, then we're happy to do that. Mike, we have a question from, from or we have a comment in somebody, uh, from somebody in the why is the service off track not being utilized. Somebody actually typed in, if someone drops out before finishing service, then they will always be off track. How do we change this status? Now, just how I showed you how you can change dates for a particular item, you take that particular item out. You take the start date and the end date out. Then they will not be off track for anything except for the item that they started and never finished because if they never started it, we just take it out of their plan. Exactly. It's very simple. Just go in and delete it out. And what you would mark in IWDS is that whatever service that they dropped out of, that would just be marked as an unsuccessful completion. And case noted, as always, you know, explain what went on. Like if someone fell off the face of the earth, well, that's what you write in the, in, the, in the plan. There are plenty of places in there to put comments. So you just have to go in and, and, and update that is all there is to it, really. So uh, one commenter put, and I get this, it's just simply easy to forget. I mean, you have several clients to deal with and it's easy to forget what dates are what for which client. That is why the system automatically grabs an end date that's been missed and tells you, hey, we have a bunch of services out there that have not been met. So, oh, okay, well, I've got a problem here somewhere. Somebody missed a date. You go in and click the number, and then you see who those people are. And then once you have that list, you can go click on the individual person's plan and see exactly what is up with them. So, yes, it's a little bit of data entry. I get that. But it also is a time saver in the end because it helps you keep better track of what is going on with your clients and hopefully provide better service to them because you know, if they're missing dates, then you know, that's something that requires our attention. So the idea here is the system is trying to give you a friendly reminder, hey, we got an issue here. Somebody needs to look at it. So I would say if, if you're not looking at your dashboard at least once a day, then you ought to be. And we if, understand See where the big not... picture of how many people you have at each phase and if any service dates haven't been met. I mean, this should be a daily thing. Go ahead, Dee. Well, we understand that sometimes people get distracted, but you need to be, you need to try to, if you want to remember something, put it in your calendar to, to remember to check it. And I found, um, you know, it becomes habit. You know, I just 
That, when I come in, that's, this is the first thing I look at every day. I say, okay, where is everybody at? And then I break it down and I look by each region and I see where everybody's at. So um, it doesn't take long. I mean, I, I can see you know, within one minute the entire condition of the entire state. So I will be following up with folks on this. So if you need technical assistance on how to run it, we're happy to show you more stuff in it right now. But I want to see these numbers go down because this, it just tells me that someone hasn't looked at it. And if someone hasn't looked at it, that makes me wonder who's actually looking at the clients. Okay, well, we've beaten that up pretty good for half an hour here. So if anyone has any other questions about it now, before we end the webinar, we're happy to walk you through how to, how to operate it. But, um, oh, Deacon, while you're here, let's show them the IWDS services and the credentials also on the, on the dashboard. There you go. Okay. So this is grabbing information right out of IWDS, and it tells you how many people are at each service phase here. So I can see that, is this live or is this uh, the, the test? This is live, it's not Memorex. <laughs> okay, great. So you can see across the state, the open category just means that somebody is in a service, they've started it, and then the other two, if they finished it, was it either successful or unsuccessful. And this is pulled straight from IWDS. But it is a quick way. You don't have to go in and look client by client by client to see where you're at uh, or run a report out of IWDS. You can click a couple of buttons here, and this will pop up. OK, let's go over to the uh, credential dashboard now, please. Uh, Mike, we have another comment that came into the what if the service off track is not being utilized, it, and it says, what if they drop out during the service so you still you don't want to delete the service? That would be an unsuccessful completion. Correct. Correct. So you'd mark them in IWDS as an unsuccessful completion of that service. And then you just you could enter a note in the comment section in IW or in Illinois WorkNet that indicates that. And you could change the end date. Um, to the day that you make the case note. Yeah, and I would mark. I would leave them marked as off track. Because if, if they didn't finish it, unless and here's there's always a caveat, right? You plans may have been set up to handle, say, eight different activities, but as the person got into it, you decided that a course correction was needed. They changed their mind. That something else looked a little bit more interesting or they had an opportunity come up that wasn't expected. Go in and change the plan. So if you'd plan to put them in work experience, but they got an offer for OJT, you can take the work experience out of the plan entirely and just say, well, you know, because a great opportunity came up, that part of the original plan is no longer relevant. So you just take it out. Now the clients, believe it or not, are checking this. We've pulled them a couple different times, and the response rate of individuals that say they're checking this is very high. And we actually can validate that by seeing who logs on. So the clients themselves are relying on this to see if they are on track or not. And obviously, they're, they ought to know themselves so if they go into this and they see that the information is not accurately reflecting where they know they're at, then they are going to see less and less value in it as well. So it behooves everyone to make sure that these plans and the status of everybody is kept up to date as best as possibly can. And if more resources need to be thrown at it, I need to know that too, and we can help you with that. But we, also, we also had a comment on that same question that's up there. We have developed internal spreadsheets that we utilize to track our clients. 
my question to the author of that comment is, is the internal spreadsheet information then being transferred to the dashboard on Adam? If not, that's what's causing some of your numbers to be off. Uh, otherwise, you could use that internal spreadsheet to um, to use that information so that you can update the Adam dashboard for your team to be able to see it. Yeah, and that's certainly possible to do. I wouldn't do it because that's duplicative data entry, so you're doing double duty on it. So the bigger question I have is, what is missing from Illinois WorkNet's tracking mechanisms that you have to put it in your own offline spreadsheet to track these folks? So you can tell me now or email me direct and tell me later. But I, I need to understand that. If, if you're doing it on your own, then that tells me, yes, you do see value in tracking the status of clients. I mean, I don't think anybody would ever argue that. So I need to understand why you're going about it that way. I'm struggling with the words here. But I'm, I need to understand why it, it makes more sense for you to do it offline than to utilize the system that's in place. All right. Um, what else shall we show them from the dashboard, Mike? Um, let's go back to the intake dashboard. Okay, let's just scroll down. Now this is one you should be checking every day as well because this tells you of the people that have applied, where are they at in the process of making it through the intake and through random assignment. So you can see how many people have come in. Uh, there are 207 people shown here that have applied but haven't taken a tape test yet. And then down below that, there are 23 people that have passed the tape but are still waiting for WIA eligibility. Then as you scroll down, the 29 number is, okay, these folks have passed WIA eligibility but haven't taken the full ADAM eligibility yet. Okay, and as you keep scrolling down, you can see, okay, um, for the drug test, you know, there's one person that is at that step yet, but they don't have the, the test scheduled yet. And overall across the state, we have a 99% pass rate on the drug test. So that's cool. So the bottom item four here on group placement tells you where people are at in their assignment. Are they in the treatment or control group or, or, or the veteran group? So as you can see, now let's scroll back up the, and remember this uh, treatment number and veteran number needs to get to 600 statewide. So that's what I'm watching. But as you can see, you can tell where people are at in the process very quickly and very easily. And this is a statewide look. When you look at this, you're going to see just your own region. But I can see your own region as well. So I, I know exactly where people are at in every region across the state. So this is something that you all ought to be looking at every day to figure out, okay, is there somebody that has applied but for some reason isn't making progress through the, through the, through the intake process? And especially you can, you can track and see if the WIA eligibility number starts growing, that tells you where the bottleneck is. So it not only tells you, you know, how many might have an issue or how many are coming through the, the process, but it can tell you where they're at. So that helps you plan your resources say, ooh, 50 people applied this week. Well, we, that means we need to allocate resources to handle a huge influx of applications that came in. So again, this is designed to help you manage your resources so that you're focused on stuff that is as much value added as possible. So again, if you're not looking at this dashboard at least once a day, 
you need to start doing that. Because there's no, nothing in here that relies on you all to go in and update stuff. This is just telling us where people are at in the process. All right, Mike, you wanted to bring up the HWOL report? Yes, thank you. Uh, let's transition to a slightly different topic. Uh, each week, the, our partners at Employment Security provide us with a list of online manufacturing job postings that is tailored for each region. I would like to know by show of hands how many people are looking at that. You can raise your hand with the little man at the top of the screen like we do for our voice test. So, and how this works, we get, um, Ron sends us the uh, IDS, Ron Payne at IDS, sends us the list tailored for each region and it's posted at Illinois WorkNet and then a notification goes out to you all to say, hey, uh, this is out there. And do, do you know what day that usually happens? I do not. Um I do not know when it comes out. Natasha's typing though for me. Usually mid month, so it's once a month. Well, no, that that is for the big report that we were doing, but now they do this for us weekly, tailored by region. Okay, so, I I don't know. We can find out. We can find out and let everybody know. Yeah. So in any case, you should be getting a notification from WorkNet that the um, new information has been released, and and if you haven't seen this. What it is, is a, it's a meta crawler that goes out across the web and scours it for like uh, Monster, Indeed, uh, Career Builder, all, all the main sites. And if a manufacturing opening has been posted online, this uh, tool grabs most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. And of course, not all manufacturing jobs get posted online. But the one, of the ones that are, this process grabs most of them. And that list is provided to you all each week, and it tells you the employer, the location, and it actually gives you a live link to the online posting so you can go to it and read more about it, like the job description, et cetera. But it also includes uh, the occupational title, the SOC code, uh, and usually a general description about what the posting is about. So, for those of you that have clients that need on-the-job training opportunities or people that are looking for permanent employment, I mean, this is, you know, you know, the whole candy store served up on a silver platter because these are live job postings that it, the employers are saying, we're looking for people. And sometimes they're placement agencies, but oftentimes they're not. Oftentimes it is you know, a direct posting straight from the employer. So this is a huge lead that is being served up to you, uh, tailored for your own region each week. So if you aren't getting the emails, let me know. If uh, you aren't looking at it yet, um, I guess I would ask why not. And um, if there's something that we can do to make it more accessible or make it more value added, we certainly want to know that. So feel free, if you have comments on it now, you can put them in the chat pod, or you can contact me directly. I'm going to put my email in the chat pod so you all have it if anybody doesn't already. But again, our goal here is to better understand how we can make this as user-friendly as possible and as value-added as possible because I'm relying on the data that's in here. And if the data that's in here is suspect, then all the reports I'm providing to the Department of Labor are also suspect. And 
I know none of you want to put me in that position. When, Trish, are you talking about the whole report, the WHOL or HWOL? When I look at ours, it appears the last report uploaded was June. Can you walk us through that again? Because June is pretty old data. Under, under the dashboard, under resources, we are uploading, um, oh, yes, we don't have a July posted. Sorry. Um, Let me refresh my screen just to make sure. We haven't received July yet. They're a month behind in some cases. Right, but that that is our old process of doing it once a month. I know Ron is providing it at least once a week. All right, so we need to check with Ron to find out um, who it's going to when it's when it gets sent, and we'll we'll check on that and get back with everybody. Yeah, I'm looking right now to see when my Last email from Ron. Okay. Um, I'm going to send this to Natasha and Dee and um, Lacey. It's possible Ron sent me this on the 14th, and the, it was as of August 8th. He may have been counting on me to forward that on. So if he was, then it's my fault I didn't forward it on. But I thought that he was sending it to me as an FYI, and he was sending it to WorkNet, the WorkNet team directly. All right. So he and I will figure that out and make sure that, you know, if that was if the breakdown was me, then my fault, and I will make sure that doesn't happen again. And we'll find a wet noodle and beat you with it. <laughs> you would be right to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so we will work on, so some of the people are using the whole report, so we just need to find out what version of it it is, and then we will make sure that you guys are getting the most current version so that you can help your job seekers as they graduate from the program. Hey, Dee, can yeah. you share the report I just sent you? Is that possible? I will look and see here. Um, did you send it to my Gmail address? Or did you uh, send it to my it, other one? Yeah, or I could share my screen. I have it up. Is that easier? Right, go ahead and share your screen. Okay, and how I'll do I... will stop sharing mine. How do I do that again? Uh, click on the share screen pod that's right there. Gotcha. It down arrow. There you go. Okay. Can you all see my screen now? It's coming up. There it comes. There it is. And do I need to make this bigger? Can you see it all okay? You need to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Down at the bottom of your oh yeah, I was doing, doing it the old-fashioned way. Yep. There. Or Control Plus. Right. Okay. So basically, running through this report, you can see starting in column A when the uh, posting was first put online, and then the last time it was looked at. So some of some of these are very current. Um, and again, Ron ran this on August 8th. So um, some of them, you know, were the day before. Oh, there's an 8-9. He must have run it on the 9th. Uh, and then this column C is the number of days between those two. So you can see how long something's been out there. And then column D is the occupational title, then the employer, where the employer is at, the SOC code, the SOC name, and then the website that the system found the posting. Sometimes they put contact info in. Usually these columns are mostly blank. Then it gives us by county. So that's how we tailor it to the region because we know what regions are in what counties. Tells you, is it permanent or full time? Is it a contract situation? And what is the educational requirement for the position? Then in 
column T is the web link to the job posting that goes online. So you just highlight this, hit your F2 key, you can highlight it, copy it, and then you can paste this into your browser and you go straight to the job posting to find out more about it. If you want to know by job title, if you want to narrow that down a little bit, if you click on this drop down arrow, every job title that shows up in this column is listed. You can deselect everything and then focus in on something that looks, okay, let's see, what do we have for assemblers? Just picking that at random because it's here near the top. So I'm just going to check everything that says assembler. And if you need to see this larger, there is a icon at the top of the share pod. You can make it that looks like four arrows. You can make that bigger so that you can see what Mike's doing even better. Here, and I'll, I'll make my screen a little bit bigger also. Oh, but I lost. Oh, here it is. Nope. Got to select all of them again. Well, there are a lot of assemblers here. Well, let's, I'm at CNC now, so I'm just going to go with that. So I'm not going to check them all, but I'm just going to show you how this works. Click OK. And then everything that you've selected is pulled out and filtered out, and everything else that you didn't select disappears. Of course, you can wipe this out. So we can see that for these particular CNC titles that were in all the listings, here's where they're at. Most of them are permanent. One's a contract situation. And then here are the links. And the whole report that Ron sends is this Excel spreadsheet. Is that correct? Yes. So the, the, the sheet is already formatted to use. It should come to you with these drop-down boxes already there, very easy to use. And you can go in and use this function and really dig into what is going on out there and you can see exactly you know, what's happening. You can you know, filter in, you can filter out, you can sort it. You can say, I want to, let's see. If you don't want, let's just say, um, not contain. Say for some reason you knew that Caterpillar didn't have anything for you. You could enter Caterpillar, is that, and then it would filter out Caterpillar so it disappears from your list. Then just go in here and you can uncheck that option. and it all comes back. And then down at the bottom. Oh. You're way at the bottom. Yeah, way at the bottom. Oh. oh, I filtered out everything mm. somehow. Oh, no. That's OK. You can undo it. Control Just go Z. to the box. Control Z. I put an asterisk in there by mistake. OK, now I got everything back. So th and these are the ones that are coming to you now, uh, should, should be in, in this format. The, these are the reports that are supposed to be coming to you by email. Yes, Trish. And the ones on, on the Atom resources are in PDF format. So they're so not sortable in PDF format. Right. So let me show you how this might work. Um, because I'm seeing here um, there is a meat cutter position that's been out there for uh, 100 days. So I'm going to combine my filtering.
Well, maybe not. There's a lot of things. Here we go. Okay. So we have several meat cutter occupations. Okay. So what if I want to know how many of these have been out there for a while and maybe an employer might be more motivated to look at one of my clients. So if you click on the um, number of days here, they all, they all show up. What you can do is you can filter it and say, I want to see everything that's been out there greater than And, and eliminate the counties that are not relevant to you. And then your list becomes much shorter and easier to manage. Although in some areas, if you, like McHenry and Cook County, might be close enough together that they want. So you might be picking multiple counties. Absolutely. Yeah, well, all of the, all of the LVAs and regions are multi-county. So you may want to look at, at you know, who's close to you. And uh, if, if you can't use it, well, you point it out to one of your regional partners and say, hey, I saw this out there. Um, you may want to take a look at it. So anyway, this is a very powerful tool because you can very quickly weed through the stuff you don't want. I'm going to try to clear filter there. And then I'm going to take off my filter on the title. And, the and now all the data came back. So it's very quick, very easy, and very painless, and very powerful. So I would encourage you all to, as soon as you get this list, scan through it and see what job openings are out there. Because... Uh, I can't imagine a shinier silver platter that this could be data could be served up on. And we will check with Ron to uh, find out who is actually supposed to be sending it to you. Well, I know that um, Jeannie had asked him to send it to the WorkNet team so they could distribute it through email. What I need to find out is was he counting on me to send it to WorkNet or was he doing that himself also? Okay. So right. that's a simple question to get answered. So you guys will be getting this weekly going forward. All right. Do you want to stop sharing your screen? Do I have to? <laughs> OK. 
Okay, where is my button for Go that? Go back to your icon, that, the webinar. Uh, gotcha. Okay. And I'm out. And, and then if you did not get a chance to check in, please do so um, before you leave the webinar today. Um, it looks like we had a question about enrolled customers, uh, personal training employment plan. Did that question get answered during the course of this webinar? Yeah, we still have a few minutes, so we're happy to take any questions that you may have thought of while we were talking. Well, if none, I thank you all for joining the webinar. What do you, um, uh, who need, what do you need a demo of, of for the PTEP? Uh, type it into the chat pod for me, please. Oh, see, I see that, D. Oh, and if you don't need a demo, we're good. <laughs> Great. Okay. All right. Well, if there are no questions at this time, we thank you all for your attendance and participation, and good luck. Let us know if any questions come up. We'll be happy to take time to help you figure it out. Thank you. Have a great day.